I thought I'd take this thing apart. It's one of these little USB chargers for inside your car. So you've got an accessory socket in your car and you plug this in and you run some USB devices off this. Now this was actually running my dash cam. And my dash cam is having problems and it's it just like power cycling. I thought the dash cam had died because I've been through a few dash cams. They don't seem to last because I think the, the heat from the sun in the summer tends to kill them. And anyway, I've swapped the charger out as a troubleshooting step. Assume the charger's bad, and sure enough, it seems to be working again. At least at the moment, we'll see if it keeps going. So I'm suspecting this charger's bad. So I'm going to pull this thing apart, we'll have a look at it, and do some load testing on it, and see if we can see what's actually wrong with it. And it used to work. Now it can't do it. Start by popping this out, because I'm pretty sure it comes out the back, because you've got this big socket which won't come through the barrel. Okay, then, yeah, this unscrews. piece on the end and there's a spring. The board is moving. Is the whole board moving? Yes, so it looks like oh, probably all I've got to do is get these terminals on the sides pushed in and I think I can then push the board out the back. I think that's how it's going to go. Let's see if it actually goes that way or not. So I've got myself a little screwdriver here. I'm going to try and sort of locate this behind there so I push against the circuit board whilst I'm pushing these little contacts on the sides in so let's see if this works it does not want to move um, hmm. there's another way I can do this like by shoving something up the side like that Maybe that's the way to do it. Stick a screw over each side and push them in from the inside edge. Is that going to work? Potentially. Hey, yeah, that's doing it. There you go. Now you've got movement. All right. Okay, here it is. Not a lot to it. So we actually have a fuse which is just a zero ohm resistor, who says something. A couple of caps here, who knows what brand they are. 20 microfarad, that one there, 10 volts, it's obviously the upper side, and we've got another one there. 105 degree rated though, it's alright. So 100 microfarad, 35 volt, I mean they seem okay. Yu Hong or something, Yu Hong, yeah okay. No name brand. So we've got a big inductor there, we've got a chip underneath it. Got a capacitor here, got a little couple of caps. Is that an LED down there? We've got a chip there. Oh, can we get the numbers? As close as I can get. The light is not helping. Work around the shadow problem. Here we go. LT3018C by UN Top. Okay, never heard of them. So it's just a little basic switcher. I mean, I don't know. Is that really capable of the 2.4 amps it claims? And that's what's on the back of it. Just bridge straight across those terminals there. Well, the soldering looks alright. I mean, there's slightly dodgy one just there. It probably is to the right though. Anyway, I'm gonna what I'll do is I'll solder some wires directly onto this, onto these outputs, and um, we'll go from there. So you've got the negative here, so obviously that big plane here, the large one. This plane, this plane, that's a negative. So it's negative side there, that'd be positive from the inductor, which has been being pulsed with that chip. And there should be a diode there somewhere. Maybe it's inside the chip. No, I don't see a diode. It must be inside the chip. Okay, well, look at that. It even says LT3018C. Let's look at the chip up and get a data sheet on screen. So I did find a little bit of information about this, and it is not much at all. An actual proper data sheet, couldn't really find one. It kept on popping up an LT3081, which isn't the same thing. Well, that does the same job. It's interesting. Different specs, different ratings, but I could find very little information about this, and it is called a 2.4 amp 
and it does have internal diode and stuff. It is a really simple circuit. Welcome to my DevCAD, which is a piloted version of DevCAD. Don't tell Dave. <laughs> so let's just quickly draw the circuit out. We've got a simple circuit coming in, right? So we've got 12 volts coming in. 12 volts coming in, right? Or thereabouts. We've got a chip like this, which is really badly drawn because I'm really terrible at drawing and stuff like that. And we've got these pins. Now pin 2 and pin 3 are not used. Pin 1 is a feedback, so it comes back in. Pin 4 is actually the 12 volts in. Okay, we have a couple of capacitors. Got a ceramic. And you also have electrolytic bulk cap. Okay, on the input side, help reducing your noise. Then we have these two pins are connected together, these two pins are connected together. Now, what are they doing? Well, these two pins are ground. And these two pins are the are the switched outputs. So this is the switch connections which go to the inductor, which then goes out, which is your five volt output in this case. Now we've got some more stuff going on here. It's not quite this simple. We still have more caps, another ceramic cap, and another electrolytic bolt cap. But then we still have more. Bring this down. I think I'll get it right. So we have a resistor and a junction and then another resistor. Now you may or may not recognize what this is. This is a resistor divider. So it's a voltage divider. So it's measuring the voltage from this point, dividing it by a ratio and then feeding that back into the chip. So the chip can then regulate its upper voltage. You'll be looking for a certain voltage on this pin. I don't know what that voltage is. I mean, it could be 2.5 volts, for example. Let's, we'll call it 2.5 volts. It's possible it's 2.5 volts. It could be 1 volt. It could be half a volt. It could be something else. Don't know. I'm going to say 2.5 volts for the sake of demonstration. These two resistors here, if you want 5 volts with a 2.5 volt reference voltage, right, feedback 2.5 volts, it'll do whatever it can. It'll adjust the output to get 2.5 volts here, which means if we've got a 10K resistor here, and a 10k resistor here, we will get 5 volts. Got that? So that's basically how it works. Um, it divides the output voltage, gives its feedback, from its feedback it drives how much it should be pulsing this coil in order to drive the voltage higher. Yeah, it's pretty much it really. I want to power this up and test it, see if it can actually do the current that it's supposed to be able to do now, whether it's starting to fail, because it was not powering up my device, so I think it's on the way out. Alright, so I've got my test set up here, ready to go. These two wires go to my power supply, which is going to generate 13.8 volts. I'm going to input 2 amps, which is plenty. These two wires go to my DC electronic load. I'm going to change the view in a second to show that load, and you can see what's happening up there. This wire is a little bit iffy, it'd probably be alright, but you know, yeah, we'll try it. This should be good because it's basically 0 volts straight in, straight back out again. It's only really interrupting the DC supply. The actual positive side is actually what's switched, so we'll change views and see how it actually behaves. So here's my DC electronic load, my signalant. So let's turn the power on. What do we get straight away with no loading on it? 5.1 volts, I mean that seems fine. We should check for ripple as well, something we should check for. I remember to do that. So let's look at the current. 10 amps I think is a bit much, what do you reckon? Let's go up with, uh, start with 1 amp. Let's see how it handles 1 amp. No, oh, what well, amp's behaving? Okay, let's just uh, wind it up. 1.5, 2 amps. Oh, interesting, it's actually behaving okay. That is very interesting. 2.4, it's doing it. 2.5, 2.6. I'm actually impressed, it's doing. It's doing 3 amps. I was not expecting that. I was expecting it to not be able to do it. So maybe this unit isn't faulty after all. I don't know. Let's check Ripple. Oh, I've got my scope turned on here. got it set up. got a 20 MHz bandwidth limit. 200 MV division AC coupling. It's not currently powered. Right, this is just ambient noise that's getting into the system. It's a bit noisy. Anyway, 
that's just radiated noise. The thing's not even powered up yet. So let's power it up. Well, that's looking okay. There's no load on it. Let's put some load on. One amp. Now it's got some loading on it, it's actually looking better. Let's just try changing a different time base. Look at that, there we go, look at that noise there. Getting pulses now. Look at that. So that's, that may or may not be the load causing that. Let's have a look. Turn the load back off. Yes, there we go. So I'll turn the load back on again. There we go. Okay, so let's just do 100 millivolts. Division, make it a bit bigger. Actually, I'll go even bigger. 50 millivolts of vision. There you go. So that's the loading, and that's the noise we get out of this device. Which, it's kind of okay. 100 millivolts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's 42 millivolts RMS, and peak to peak is 220 odd millivolts, 250 millivolts peak to peak. It's getting up there a little bit. And say so turn the load back off again. So let's just change the loading to um, let's say two amps and turn it back on. It's about 300 millivolts peak to peak noise now. Okay. And let's just increase this to say 2.4, which is maximum rated. That's again, that's still about 300 millivolts peak to peak. It's quite a lot. I mean, if you put a bigger cap on this, it would actually work a bit better. I'm just winding the current down now. So 100 milliamps. And you can see the noise there is very different. It's still quite noisy. You can really use a big cap on the back of it. So let's just get a big cap. 220 microfarad. Let's whack this across the output and see what happens to this noise. That's 220 on there now. So I'm going to put the current back up. It's back to one amp. Yeah, I'll do two amps, all right? Two amps. That's with the capacitor on there. So 180 millivolts noise, take it back off. So that's definitely doing something. Now let's try something different. Now I'm going to use a tantalum cap, 47 microfarad tantalum. Does this make any difference? Marginal. Marginal difference, it's not making a lot of difference. It's helping slightly, just with a 47 microfarad tantalum. And I actually expect the tantalum to be doing slightly better than that. Because tantalums work better for high frequency noise because of the internal resistance. Let's try 100 microfarad. I think I've got one here which will reach. Get right around. <laughs> Don't get that wrong. It's 100 microfarad tantalum. And. Yeah, that's doing almost nothing as well. The electrolytic was actually doing better, which I'm actually surprised by. So, when I actually looked at the information for this device, what I did find is it mentioned a 470 microfarad output cap. Now, this does not have a 470 microfarad output cap, it's got a 100. You know, I'm going to stick a 470 across it. That's a 470. So, that is definitely bringing it down to about 180 or so. So, it's not actually much better than the 220 was. It's just a noisy output. Well, this is my test setup. But that was not what I was expecting. I was expecting to see much worse noise than that and I was also expecting to see the thing dropping off with current and the fact that it's still handling 3 amps for that short time I tested it was actually quite impressive so that's good it's meeting its spec so why was it playing up? I don't know maybe it's connections into the accessory socket in the car maybe it's a bit of a dirty connection there and by me taking it out and putting a new one in clean connections maybe that was the problem maybe it wasn't this or maybe my dash cam is actually dying, I just got lucky and I tried it again. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to put this new back together. It seems to be fine. It is what it is, really. Subscribe over here if you're interested in electronics videos. There's other videos that you can watch down below in the description and in the bottom of the video here. And up here is a Patreon support link if you want to help support the channel and donate. You know, a couple of dollars a month, that's all it is. And you can gain access to these things earlier and get extra information. Catch you later.